What's up keto campers? In this video, I'm gonna break down seven key benefits of intermittent fasting. Whether you are a beginner who's getting into fasting because you've heard so many of the benefits, or you're somebody who has been doing fasting but you kinda wanna take it up a notch, I'm gonna explain the science behind fasting. And it turns out these seven key benefits go beyond weight loss. Meaning, if you do it the right way, weight loss will be a side effect of getting healthy, right? Because we don't lose weight to get healthy, we get healthy to lose weight. And Dr. Eric Berg talks about that all the time. So I'm gonna break it all down for you. Before I do, I wanna just say hello and thank you so much for joining me live here on Keto Camp. I'm the founder of Keto Camp, Ben Azadi. I'm a certified functional health practitioner, best-selling author of three books. And here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate, to inspire one billion people. The first key benefit of intermittent fasting is this word called autophagy. You might have heard about it. It is a buzzword nowadays. Autophagy, the literal definition of autophagy, at least the Greek definition, is eat thyself. The body is so stinking smart. There's this innate intelligence within your body. Every single person watching this, within my body, every single human being has this innate intelligence. And here's what happens. When the body is not getting energy from food, it's going to need to get energy from somewhere to stay alive, right? So what does it do? Well, it starts tapping into your fat stores, fantastic, but also it turns on this autophagy switch which looks for damaged power plants of your cells, damaged proteins in the body, and it uses that for energy first. So here's the analogy for you. Do you know like when you go to the supermarket and you're in the, the produce section, and you always see that person who works there, maybe it's Publix or Whole Foods or whatever your local grocery store is, but there's that person who works in the produce section and his sole job is to look for produce, expired fruits and vegetables. And when he finds that, remove it from the produce section and replace it with fresh fruit, fresh, fresh vegetables. Guess what? Your body does the same thing with autophagy. When you go through a fast and you turn on this autophagy switch, your body's looking for expired cells and protein and mitochondria and replacing that with healthier cells or it's cleaning out those cells. So think of Pac-Man going through your body, going within your cells, an intracellular Pac-Man cleaning out the junk. And if Pac-Man determines this cell cannot be fixed and not be repaired, it creates something called apoptosis, which is program cell death and your body stimulates a new stem cell for a healthier cell. So the body has these senescent cells, AKA zombie cells, and when you fast and activate autophagy, you get rid of it. The body is so smart, it goes for the bad stuff first. So out of the 70 trillion cells that we have in the human body, 70 billion of those cells need to be recycled and repaired every single day and the most powerful way to get that going is with autophagy. Look, the problem is that so many people, especially Americans, eat every two to three hours. They're in this constant fed state and they're never allowing their body to get in this, into this autophagy process. Here's an alarming stat for you. The average American eats 17 to 23 times per day, meaning, they're grabbing a handful of almonds, they're drinking a sip of that kombucha, they're biting a piece of that keto protein bar. Every time you raise glucose and insulin, even if it's, if it's from the healthiest snack in the world, anytime you raise glucose and insulin, that is a meal to the body. Whenever you raise glucose and insulin, autophagy is bye-bye. So we love autophagy because the human body only has two pathways. Either we're in a growth anabolic state and you activate this pathway called mTOR, which stands for mechanistic target of rapamycin. So you're either in this growth phase, think of that as like Arnold Schwarzenegger, anabolic bodybuilders. We don't always want to be in a growth, a growth state, but we do want to go there from time to time. The opposite of mTOR is autophagy, it's catabolic, it's repairing, and your body is so smart. That's the benefit number one, autophagy, eat thyself. It's such amazing science behind this autophagy process that the Nobel Prize winner back in 2016, this uh, Japanese researcher, he won the Nobel Prize for his breakthrough research in autophagy. So yes, forget about juice cleanses, forget about all these downstream detox cleanses out there. 
the real way to heal the body, the real way to detox is through autophagy. And how do you get autophagy? Is through fasting. And uh, where does autophagy start during a fast? Well, it depends on the person, how metabolically flexible you are going into a fast. But most people, it'll be around the 16 to 18 hour mark of a fast that your body starts turning on this autophagy. Uh, and Dr. Thomas Seafried, who is the author of Cancer as a Metabolic Disease, he is a world-renowned oncologist, he has seen tumors in his patients shrink before his eyes when they achieve this maximum autophagy with a block fast because the body goes into this rapid repair and healing mode and he's actually seen this occur in his patient. So it's an amazing process. Autophagy is one of my favorite reasons why, underrated uh, reason why somebody should practice fasting. I'm gonna get into reason number two. I can't believe I'm just on reason number two now. Before I get into that, please on YouTube, hit the thumbs up button on this video. If you're watching live right now, um, you have to close the chat box and then hit the thumbs up button and then open that chat box back up if you're on your phone. Also, please let me know right now in the chat box where you're watching from. Where is your city? Where's your state? Where in the world are you today? Whether you're watching the replay or watching this live, let me know in the chat box down below. I wanna check you out right now. I'm here in beautiful Miami, Florida. It is spectacular here at Keto Camp HQ. Uh, I'd love to know where you're at in this world. We have Richard, who's a super camper in Massachusetts, Wilma in Germany, Germany in the house, good to see you. Uh, we have Nook, good to see you here, Nook. We have Gary from Queens, Layla in North Carolina, Kiki in California, we have Viking Queen in Missouri, Gary Woods is in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, awesome. Pompano next Friday, Pompano Beach, Florida, is that where you're going? We have Virgin Islands, awesome. We have Michigan, good to see you, Tara. And we have California. What's up, Will? All right. That was reason number one, autophagy. Reason number two is a rise in stem cells. The body, once it gets rid of a cell, it needs to create a new cell. So it signals to the body to create a stem cell. Now, you might heard, have heard that word stem cell and you're thinking, oh, you got to spend all this money, get it from umbilical cords. There's a lot of controversy behind it. Well, guess what? Your body produces stem cells for free and you get that when you fast because your body is going to crush a cell, a precancerous cell, a fat cell. When, once it gets rid of a cell via apoptosis, it needs to create a new cell. So it produces a stem cell. When you do this, you heal old injuries. In fact, when I did a block fast, I did a five day water fast last year. I'm going to do another one coming up soon. My body, I had such lower back pain. My lower back pain was killing me because when I used to be obese, I used to always pull out my back. But I hadn't had back pain in years, but when I went through my block fast, it was autophagy healing that part, crushing damaged cells in my lower back and producing a stem cell, a healthier cell, to repair that injury. So maybe a shoulder, an ankle, a torn ACL, a hip fracture in the past, when you go through a fast and activate autophagy, your body will repair. It'll seek out that area that needs healing. So you might get pain during a fast, especially if you go more than 24 hours. It could be in your head, your neck. It's not necessarily a bad thing. That signals areas of healing. The body is so smart. So you get free stem cells with fasting. That is your benefit number two. The benefit number three, this is going to be a favorite for you because you all are into the ketogenic lifestyle and I love it too. The benefit number three of fasting is a rise in ketones, all right? Keto is not a diet. Keto is a metabolic process and it's been around since humans have been around. So when your coworker or your friend says, oh, you're doing that keto diet, that's just a trend, you're going to get a heart attack, ask them if they know that every single culture in the history of this world, all of our ancestors were in a state of ketosis. They didn't do it by eating a whole bunch of fat. Technically, they did it by fasting because when you fast, your body's going to need to get energy from somewhere, like I mentioned. So it'll start breaking down fat, breaking down triglycerides. All of a sudden, your brain does not have glucose. So what does it do? It switches to ketones. That's where your liver signals a production of ketones to fuel the brain. This is why when you were a baby, you were in ketosis because breast milk has saturated fat, has cholesterol, and it helps the baby's brain develop because our brain is 80% fat. 
Not only that, out of the 70 trillion cells that we're made of, guess what? There's a lipid bilayer around every single cell called the cell membrane. Life begins and ends at the cell membrane. Do you know what it's made of? Saturated fat, protein, and cholesterol. The body loves fat. You're made up of fat. We are not made up of carbohydrates. There's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. So ketones can be produced not by eating a whole bunch of fat, because a lot of people look at, they look, they go on Dr. Google and they type in what is the keto diet and they'll get over 100 million results and they'll look at the percentages of macros and they'll say, okay, 70% fat, uh, what, 15% protein, 5% carbohydrates, and they start eating according to those macros and they start stuffing themselves with fat, drinking these MCT oils, and they don't get the results they want because they think they need to meet that 70% of macros coming from fat. But here is something that really consider. Your body could get that fat from the plate of food in front of you or from your body fat, from your hips and your thighs. So it's really your choice. When you fast, your body will crush fat cells. Your body will start using that for energy and your liver will produce ketones. So it's one of the best way to get, ways to get into ketosis. And we know ketones are anti-inflammatory. We know ketones help with brain fog. It also turns on longevity genes like the CERT1 genes. Ketones are where it's at. The research is finally starting to catch up, but keto has been around for hundreds of thousands of years, okay? All of your ancestors were in a state of ketosis. They were forced by their environment. The problem is that we can have our, we're so blessed, so it's a gift and a curse, but we're so blessed to have food readily available to us so we could just go on our phone, hit the Uber Eats app, and then 30 minutes later, we have this millennial knocking on our door with a whole bunch of food. Our ancestors didn't care about Uber Eats. Our ancestors are, pro, we are programmed the way our ancestors had to live to survive, and that's in, going in and out of a state of ketosis. So that's reason number three, or benefit number three, you get a boost in ketones. We, okay, number four is my, what, my favorite tip here. I'm gonna share it for you real quick, but um, I wanna just first ask you, if you're new to the YouTube channel here on Keto Camp, put first timer, I wanna acknowledge you, and if you haven't posted where you're watching from, post where you're watching from. I'll try to get to a, some questions at the end of this live stream, so you can post it down below, and please hit the thumbs up button on this video if you haven't done so already. Um, let's get to my favorite benefit of fasting, which is number four here, and that's going to be energy diversion. Energy diversion. When we eat food, it takes massive amounts of energy and resources and blood flow to process food. Okay, okay think about that. Chewing the food to digesting the food and having that food go out the colon. It takes massive amounts of energy and resources to take the macronutrients, process it into micronutrients. I'm gonna ask you a question here and I want you to guess to, to see if you know the answer. Dr. Zach Bush, you might've seen my work about this. Dr. Zach Bush, who is a triple board um, doctor, triple board certified doctor, brilliant man. If you haven't checked out his work, go check out his work. He did a study at the University of Virginia where they got these college students and what they did was they wanted to know how long it took for food to be digested, meaning a standard American diet, two slices of pizza, AKA a stupid American diet, 800 calories, and they tracked how long it took from that food from chewing out the colon. How many hours do you think it takes to process food, a standard American diet? Put the total down below, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. How many hours do you think it takes to process food? I'm curious to know your answer before I give you the answer. So I should be playing the Jeopardy music here, but I'm not. But how many hours do you think it takes to process food? Janice, I'm glad you like that millennial analogy. <laughs> so Zippor, Zippor says 14, Gary says 14, Richard says 24, uh, Nook says two to three hours, Viking Queen says three or one, Will says eight. Depends, two to four days, Janine, 22 hours. Awesome, these are great guesses, I love the guesses. So the, in 26, I see that, Richard. 18 hours, says John. The answer is 14 hours. So Zippor got it right, some of you got it right. Yeah, Joe got it right. 14 hours is how long it takes. Meaning, meaning, if we don't go at least 14 hours in a fasted state, we create a backlog of food, leading to indigestion, 
leading to heartburn, leading to esophageal disorders, leading to autoimmune because we know that every single autoimmune disease is linked to the gut. Also, this, this is very important because we have the coronavirus, the, the whole, the fear mongering by the media, right? If you have a weakened immune system, it's because you have a weakened gut and you have a weakened gut because you're eating every two to three hours. You're never letting your gut process and digest and repair. The coronavirus, by the way, is not even as bad as the flu. So yes, we, sh we don't want the coronavirus, but the, the, we shouldn't panic here. There's a lot of fear mongering. Uh, I don't watch CNN. I don't watch constantly negative news, CNN. Just know that the body's amazing. And when you practice fasting, when you get sun, when you take vitamin D, when you get good sleep, the coronavirus is nothing to you. It'll actually make you stronger if you get it. Um, so going back to my point here, so many people have a weakened immune system because they're eating every two to three hours. But when you practice fasting, here's what happens. Your body is going to divert energy from processing food and it targets areas of healing, okay? It targets areas of healing. So here's the deal. Here's the analogy I'm gonna give you. Somebody who does not practice fasting, somebody who eats every two to three hours, this is what, what's happening to their digestive system. It's like this, this corporate worker, let's call her Stacy. Hopefully nobody on here is named Stacy, but I'm not talking about you if you're named Stacy. Stacy works eight hours every single day in her, her corporate job. She, one of these days, she goes to work at 8 a.m. and she clocks out around 5 p.m. She put a full day's work and Stacy's walking to her car. She's exhausted from all that work she put in for eight hours. And all of a sudden she gets a phone call from her boss saying, Stacy, we need you to come right back in and work another five hours. We have this big project that just came in. We need you to work on it. So reluctantly so, Stacy walks back to the, her office, works for another five hours. It's now 10 p.m. at night. She is super exhausted, walking back to her car, and she gets that same phone call from her boss. Stacy, we need you to come back in for another five hours. Imagine this happening to Stacy for days, for weeks, for months. She would be destroyed. Well, this is what's happening to our digestive system if we're not at least fasting 14 hours every single day. We are never allowing the digestive system to take a break, to rest, so when you finally give your digestive system a break and you're fasting, it's like having three days off of work. And Dr. Papa said this on the interview I did with him this week. It's like having three days off of work. All of a sudden on that second or third day, you're looking around your house and apartment and you start cleaning up things that you haven't had a chance to get to because now you have all this time and energy. So energy diversion is my favorite out of the seven here. And autophagy is a close second, but energy diversion, heal the gut, practice fasting, it'll get rid of a lot of indigestion and esophageal digestive disorders. Okay, that was number four. I'm just looking at my notes here. We have number five here. Before I get to number five, please, please, please on YouTube, hit the thumbs up, but thumbs up button on this video if you haven't done so already. It really helps YouTube show this video to more people and I hope you're getting value from this. By the way, if you wanna learn more about fasting, I have a free, um, my free book, it's a best-selling book that you could buy on Amazon, but you could get the digital download for free today by going to fastingcheatsheet.com. Fastingcheatsheet.com. There's also a link here on, down below on YouTube if you want to click on that. And then also I'm doing a free keto webinar this Friday, Four Ways to Mastering Keto. I'm also going to be talking about fasting and how to incorporate fasting with keto it's 100% free, but there's only room for 500 people. That's my capacity for Zoom. And currently there's over 300 people registered for it. So it's gonna be March 13th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. And if you wanna get signed up and join me on Friday, you're also going to get over $200 worth in free digital downloads and books and recipe guides. Head over to benazadiwebinar.com. So it's my name, benazadiwebinar.com. And I'll see you this Friday. Hopefully you're not watching the replay and you're getting this on time. Okay, what was the next benefit? Key benefit number five is going to be something called hormone optimization. Hormone optimization. Look, we know that hormones are the major players in the body. It's an orchestra because we have, first and foremost, over 600 hormones in the body. Okay, we have over 600 hormones. We have our fat-burning hormones. We have our 
leveling tool. We have our um, fat storage hormone, insulin, and then we have a whole host of other hormones. Hormones communicate to our cells to produce energy, to burn fat, to help us feel good. So many people have desensitized hormones, specifically insulin. We know that fasting is a powerful way to reverse insulin resistance, to reverse type 2 diabetes, to reverse a lot of these metabolic syndromes because it helps your hormones become more sensitive, meaning they get to do their job more efficiently. So I'm going to give you another analogy here because I think you really understand it when I give analogies. If you like, if you like it when I give analogies, by the way, just type down below analogy. If you like the analogies, type down below analogy. I'm going to give you another one right now. A lot of people have desensitized hormones, meaning your hormones are still sending signals to your cells, but this, the message is not being heard because the receptor sites are blunted. So the analogy is this. It's like, when you, when, uh, it's like you screaming at me, burn fat, burn fat. You're yelling at me, burn fat. But I have my fingers in my ears. I can't hear you, right? So the message is not being received. So taking more hormones, it's not necessarily the answer. It's having those hormones communicate, removing my fingers from my ears, removing inflammation from your cells so that message can be heard. When you fast, it reduces cellular inflammation from your receptor sites. It's like me taking my fingers out of my ears. Oh, I can hear you. Yes, okay, I'll burn fat. So that's what's happening. It helps your hormones become more sensitive. We don't want high amounts of hormones. We want optimal amounts of hormones that can actually be heard by our cells. I see a lot of you writing analogy, Jill, Tara, uh, Janine. I, I love it. Love it. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you're enjoying the analogy. Layla, Dennis, Jessica. So that's, that's benefit number six is your body has more sensitive hormones. Okay, number seven is it resets the microbiome. I kind of already it resets the gut microbiome. We know that so many people have leaky gut. What is leaky gut? Leaky gut is when your tight junction, so you have these, you have a, mu it's called a mucosal barrier within your digestive system. The mucosal barrier is a physical barrier for digesting food. So the same way you have skin, and when something splashes on your skin, it protects it from getting into the body, right? It, it, it tries to at least. So you have this mucosal barrier, which is supposed to keep food inside that digestive system throughout the whole process of digestion. When you have leaky gut, which I would 80% of people have leaky gut, when you have leaky gut, guess what's happening? All of a sudden, your tight junctions, this mucosal barrier opens up. It's like having you poking holes in your gut and you eat food and that food goes undigested and it ends up into your bloodstream, creating an autoimmune response. Your body starts to attack that food. And when this happens over and over and over, a symptom manifests and it's called autoimmune. It's called, um, um, it's called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It's called multiple sclerosis. It's called Raynaud's, which I have Raynaud's, by the way. It's called whatever uh, autoimmune you want to talk about. There's a hundred autoimmune diseases out there and an additional 40 that are associated to autoimmune. And it really, really starts with the, with the gut. So we know when you produce ketones, that's very powerful to heal the gut. When you fast, you are repairing the gut. So that's the, the sixth benefit right there. It really resets your gut microbiome and it helps to really reverse a lot of the symptoms you're experiencing because Symptoms are not the problem. Whatever symptom you're dealing with, that is not the problem. I know it sucks to deal with it, but that is a result of the problem, right? So when you fast, you're getting to the root cause. So that's benefit number six. I have one more for you here. This has been a lot of fun. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button yet, please hit that here on YouTube. All right, this is a powerful benefit. Number seven, the final benefit of fasting, at least on this video, is going to be resetting your DNA. You might have heard before that you were born with a set of genes. Look, maybe you have cancer, maybe you have, not, not cancer, you, but maybe cancer runs in the family, maybe heart disease runs in the family, maybe diabetes runs in the family, like myself. Does that mean you are doomed for that destiny? It's true that we cannot change the genes that we're born with. So if that runs in the family, yeah, you have those genes. However, we are in control over the expression of those genes via epigenetics. So here's another analogy for you. Think of the genes you're born with as the bullets that load the gun. 
You cannot change those deck of cards. You cannot change those bullets. But you, keto campers, determine whether or not you pull the trigger on that gun. You do it with your lifestyle behaviors. You do it with the food you eat, the thoughts you think, the people you associate with. It's everything that we do on a daily basis. So when you think of genes as a light switch, you turn on, you turn off. So if you have symptoms, you turn on these bad genes. But with fasting, fasting is a powerful way to down-regulate these, uh, these bad genes, to turn off bad genes and turn on longevity genes. So genes are amazing. We have control over our genes. We have 90% at least control over the, over the expression of those genes. So this should empower you and inspire you to know that you are in control over your genetics and it's not the other way around. We are not doomed by our genes. It's the other way around. We are in control. We are the captain of our future. We are the victor of our future, not the victim of our past. I really hope this episode or this video was helpful to you. Again, if you wanna get my free fasting book, you could go to fastingcheatsheet.com to get it for free. And if you wanna join my free keto webinar on Friday, March 13th, go to keto, um, go to, excuse me, benazadiwebinar.com. I'm gonna answer some questions for you, see what questions came through here. I see Sandra, Orlando, Timothy, good to see you all in here. I see Phoenix. So um, if you answer, ask the question up below, post it down now and I'll answer it for you. You're welcome, Brenda. Thank you, Timothy. Tia, how long should we fast each day for all the benefits? Yeah, good question. So my favorite fasting schedule for most people is an 18-6 format. 18 hours out of the day, you're in a fasted state. You're having just some water and some sea salt. And then six hours, you're, you're feasting. And I use that word intentionally. So you're going, let's say 12 to 6 p.m. is your eating feasting window. And then 6 p.m. to 12 p.m. the next day is your fasting window. So I like that. If you want to get some more autophagy, definitely throwing in like a 24-hour fast um, once per week or doing a block fast. By the way, speaking of block fasting, if you want to get that maximum autophagy that I spoke about earlier uh, that Dr. Thomas Seifert has said, you could reduce your chances of any cancer by 95% once you get this maximum autophagy. I'm actually taking a group of 30 people. I'm taking them through a seven-week program uh, designed to teach them how to achieve this maximum autophagy. There's not a lot of space for it. It's going to be a very intimate group. That is launching this Monday, March 16th. A lot of the Keto Camp Academy members have signed up already, but there is some room for a few more. So if you'd like seven weeks of health coaching from me to teach you how to get this maximum autophagy, head over to ketocampfasting.com. Ketocampfasting.com to learn more about it. And I'd love for you to be one of the 30. I know you and Dr. Papa discussed high blood glucose during a fast. It would appear that my insulin resistance is still, is still high, even though I've lost 66 pounds. What would you suggest, a longer fast? Dennis, congratulations, first and foremost, on 66 pounds. And thanks for watching my interview with Dr. Pompa. If you haven't seen that, that was my all-time favorite interview to date. Um, so how do you, yeah, insulin resistance takes time. It could take years for some people. But yes, longer fast can potentially help. Also doing some sort of detox because you got to remember this. I just, I spoke at Low Carb USA earlier this year, January in Boca, and my talk was about insulin resistance, diabetes, obesity, and toxicity. When toxins enter the body, we have these specific toxins that sit on our receptor sites, preventing insulin from pushing glucose into the cells. So I would estimate, and again, this is just a guess, that at least 33%, 33% of insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes is a result of toxicity alone. So I teach more about this in my Keto Camp Academy, but yeah, a longer fast would help to answer your question, Dennis, and just stick and stay, it's bound to pay. You rock too, Janine, I appreciate you. Um, should, you change your should you change your normal fasting window during a woman's cycle? Yes, good question, Tara. Let me just drink some water and I'll answer your question now. Yeah, if you don't know who Dr. Pompa is, he is the best in the game. Got to go check him out. And I just, he's, his uh, new interview will just dropped this week with me. Um, Tara, fasting should not be done five to seven days leading up to your monthly cycle. Those, you should do a 14, maybe 16 hour, but nothing more than that. We want more insulin, insulin spikes to help hormonal conversions. 
Um, so yeah, I, I don't think you should fast too much five to seven days leading up to your period. Once you have your period, go back all in into fasting. That'll help with the monthly cycle. Janice, I am grateful you're enjoying this. Hey, on, on Facebook, share this if you can. Share this on your profile and, or tag a friend on Facebook who is practicing fasting. Um, what other questions are there here? Receive my cheat sheet. You're welcome, Barry. Glad you got it. Hello, kiss me. Dr. Pompa is great. Um, will your next chat pop up in my notifications like today? Uh, what do you mean next next video? If you hit the bell when you subscribe to my channel or hit, hit the bell now, you'll get notified anytime I go live or release a new video. I'm going to be releasing a, a video here on YouTube with Dr. Ken Berry tomorrow. How many of you know Dr. Ken Berry? Uh, put Dr. Ken Berry if you know who he is. Dr. Ken Berry is a medical doctor. He's been on the Keto Ken podcast before uh, last year, but he's coming back tomorrow. Um, do you know who Dr. Ken Berry is? I'm, I'm curious. Uh, yes, yes, a lot of you know Dr. Ken Berry. So I'm releasing that episode tomorrow with him. It'll be on the podcast and on YouTube. It's a great conversation. We, what I asked Dr. Ken Berry is this, because I know this is going to help you all. Um, there's so many people out there teaching keto, teaching fasting, and we all agree on the foundations of it. But then we have specific things that we disagree on, right? There's going to be things I say that Dr. Ken Berry disagrees with and vice versa. Thomas DeLauer and vice versa, Dr. Berg, Ben Greenfield, Dave Asprey, Dr. Pompa. There's going to be things that we don't agree on. And it's enough to drive people crazy when I say, oh, that doesn't break your fast. But Thomas DeLauer says that breaks your fast. So I asked Dr. Ken Berry on this interview, what would you say to somebody who is just so conflicted by this information? And we agreed to stick with the foundations and to experiment and keep what's working for you. And we go a little bit deeper. So I think it's going to be a helpful conversation for you. It's such a great conversation. I can't wait to release that tomorrow. Yeah, he's a common sense doctor. He does not beat around the bush. He tells it like it's straight up. Dr. Boz, I got to reach out to Dr. Boz and get her on my podcast. Can you discuss supplements and fasting, please? Absolutely, will. Um, supplements, ideally, you want to take your supplements away from your fasting window just because it might push your body in a, in a specific direction and uh, we don't want that. We want the innate, innate intelligence to do its thing. So if you can, have your supplements outside of your fasting window. Have it with your eating window. With the exception of magnesium, with the exception of electrolytes, with the exception of uh, like hydrogen molecular water, like fast tonic, that's okay. But ideally, yeah, you want to have it during your eating window. Um... I'm gonna answer two more questions, then I'm gonna get off here and go get in a fasted workout. I hurt my, my neck yesterday. It's strained, it's hard for me to turn doing some dumbbell stuff. Yeah, Richard, Richard is a super camper. So you see how Richard has this little custom emoji next to his name, a badge? He has that because he's a super camper. And you can become a super camper on YouTube. It's a great community platform where you get custom emojis, custom badges, and cool little perks. Um, and it's a $6.99 a month, you cancel any time, and it helps contribute to this channel because it takes a lot of money and effort and resources and there's a lot of people on the team to get these videos out to you. So you can help contribute to that by just becoming a super camp. There's a join button here on YouTube. Uh, look, you don't have to do that. I'm still gonna bring out content, but it's just an option for you and Richard's one of the super campers. Um, two more questions, two more questions. Let's see, what are the two questions I'm going to answer? You're welcome, Dennis. I appreciate you. Should you be in ketosis before you begin fasting? Lois, great question. On my webinar on Friday, I'm going to say, I'm going to recommend that. Yeah, I think it's important to do some prep work before going into a fast. We want to think of fasting as a muscle like that we develop over time, right? We wouldn't just be a couch potato for 10 years and say, oh, I heard about CrossFit. I'm going to do a wad tomorrow, CrossFit workout tomorrow. It's going to look ugly. You're not going to get through that workout you're going to suffer. Same thing with fasting. You want to be a sugar burner, eating every two to three hours, eating high carbohydrate diet, a high carbohydrate diet, and then say, I'm going to fast tomorrow. So that's going to look ugly. And you're not going to get a lot of these benefits that I'm speaking about. So yes, get keto adapted or at least go low carb and then go into fasting and you'll maximize autophagy. You'll get into autophagy faster and you'll maximize all the benefits that I spoke about. So I'm going to be teaching that Friday on my webinar, uh, free webinar, benazadiwebinar.com. Um, can you take vitamins in fasting? I just answered that. I recommend taking it outside of your fasting window, Kimberly. 
Uh, vaping, I'm not a fan of. I think it's dangerous for not just keto, but for everything, anything that you're doing. Vaping is a hidden, hidden stressor that people think is healthy. Sorry, um, Instagram. People think is healthy, but it's not. One more question. Who's gonna ask me, ask me this question? I know I missed a lot up, up top, but I can't really scroll back and see it. Um, so I'll take one more question. Gotta run, this has been fun. Thank you, Ben, so very much. You are very welcome. One of my favorites, like the, uh, that is Adi. Awesome, Dennis, I appreciate that. If you haven't watched that video with Dr. Pampa, best interview yet, go watch it. What do you recommend, this is the final question I'll answer. What do you recommend to break a fast? CC, great question. We wanna break the fast with protein and fat. We do not want to break the fast with a combination of um, carbohydrates and fat. Not good. So bone broth is the best way to break a fast. A keto smoothie with healthy fat and protein, that's great. Eggs and sauteed veggies, salmon and grass-fed steak, these are all great ways to break a fast. Bone broth is probably the best way. I love Kettle and Fire. Kettle and Fire, uh, they sponsor a lot of my videos. They make the best bone broth if you're going to buy it that I have found. And you could get 15% off of your Kettle and Fire by going to um, kettleandfire.com and using Keto Camp at checkout. The reason I love bone broth to break a fast, by the way, it has glutamine, it helps line the gut, it has the great ratio of high protein and electrolytes and aminos, so it's a great thing to do when you're breaking a fast. Hey, I'm gonna sign off here. I wanna thank you all so much for watching this live stream. I'm so grateful for you all. I love you, Keto Campers. Stay tuned for Dr. Ken Berry's episode being released tomorrow. Please share this with a friend. You know, send a text to a friend when we sign off here. Share this live stream with them. Somebody's thinking about doing fasting and hit the thumbs up button on this video. The resources I mentioned, fastingcheatsheet.com. Get this for free. If you wanna join my seven week program launching this Monday, go to ketocampfasting.com. And my free webinar is benazadiwebinar.com. Thank you all for spending part of your day with me. I'm super grateful. Love you all. And I just admire you all so much for wanting to learn and share it with your community. And let's keep getting better. Beat yesterday. Talk to you all very soon.